So once again, we just really press with every video that we are not trainers and assessors. We cannot tick you off and assess you in any of this stuff, even in the physical. Uh, these videos should never ever be taken as formal training. If you do, and we highly recommend it, if you do want to seek formal training or go and climb with qualified guides to safeguard you, we have recommendations and links on all our videos and all of our pages for people that we highly regard um, within our area. If you're in a slightly different area, look for people that are qualified to actually teach you these things physically on site or guides to take you out safely climbing. Again, we are not trainers and assessors. These videos are not formal training. Okay, so today I thought we would break things up a little bit considering that so far all of our videos have been climbing related. Um, and you know, we do a lot more than just climbing. Yes, we are guides and that's what we work as, uh, but you know, we also enjoy hiking and pretty much any other land-based adventure type thing. I'll say for myself, I'm not a huge fan of water, but anything on land, any sort of environment, terrain, um, yeah, I'm pretty much up for anything. So anyway, today I'm looking at how to pack a pack and how I pack my pack for a longer period of time. Looking at, you know, more, more than just an overnighter. Um, the way that I've packed today is probably more for temperate type conditions. Nothing super super warm and nothing super super cold. So just sitting in the middle there. Um, if I was going to either of those extremes, I would probably pack a little bit differently. And obviously if I was going into the alpine terrain, I'd have my crampons, I'd have ice axe, snowshoes, um, other snow ice related tools and things. Um, if I was going into a much warmer environment, I would probably have a slightly different sleeping setup and the clothes um, I would pack would be vastly different. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Packing for a temperate type climate. With this pack system, I've gone with a hammock for my sleeping arrangement. Um, depending where I was going, I could make a different choice and instead bring my tent. Uh, this is a Four Seasons tent, um, or Mountain Designs, but Four Seasons tent. Uh, I've used it in the snow, I've used it here in Queensland. Uh, yeah, it's super versatile. It does weigh a little bit, um, but I'm very happy with it. So, yeah, if I was going somewhere where I wasn't sure I could set a hammock up, I would probably take a tent instead. But today, um, I'm using a hammocking system. So first things that I pack, uh, I've got a 70 litre here, foam mat on the outside, strapped to the outside. I just keep that there. Um, I haven't bothered to unstrap that just to put it back on. So first thing I'm first things I'm going to pack are going to be quite lightweight, uh, my sleeping bits. So I've got here a sleeping bag, um, obviously it could be in a smaller compression sack if I needed it, but I've got it in an Osprey sort of day pack, a really light day pack. So if I were to get somewhere and wanted to do a few sort of side missions, little side adventures, I could then use this as my pack for that instead of lugging this big fella around. So that's the first thing I put in, knowing that it will compress a lot. Then I move on to... My air mattress, which I use on top of the foam, just for extra comfort. Obviously you can deal with just one or the other. I really like to use both, so I sleep well and comfortable. Um, I mean, I am hammocking on this occasion, um, so really, 
you don't need them. It's up to you. I mean, yeah, look, if I was purely hammocking, I'd probably get rid of this. I'd keep this for just sitting around on, on camp as it's very lightweight or cut down to a smaller one as just a sit pad. So the next thing I'm gonna throw in is essentially my entire hammock system here that's all kind of shoved together. So this is my hammock and my bug net um, with straps attached to it via a beaner to thread around trees and set up. So that's the next thing that I'm gonna throw in. Then I have my tarp to go over the hammock system to keep me dry if any weather happens to come in. I might set this up right away or I might just wait and see. It's a pretty clear day today. I wouldn't need it, I don't think, unless a storm comes in with Sarbo. Um, but yeah, I uh, still always pack that in as one of the first items as it's quite lightweight and versatile just to slip in the side. Ah uh, yes, so this is my underquilt for my hammock. So this is to keep me a little bit warmer if temperatures do drop overnight. So it's essentially a quilt that goes under and then your hammock. So it retains body temperature and stops the cold coming up from the bottom of the hammock. So yeah, that's a must have if you're gonna be anywhere that could get so chilly at night. Um, it's, I'm in Queensland, it's the middle of summer there's no way I need an underquilt at the moment, but still really useful to have if you're going to be hammocking. So also just stuff that in at this point. So this gets me to the mid layer. So this is where I'm going to be putting slightly heavier things. Um, this is where my cookware would go, my food and probably an extra bottle of water. I'm not a fan of Camel Pack's um, water bladders. I don't like them, they can pop. It's hard to judge how much water you've drunk when you can't visibly see it. So I like to use bottles and just either sterilize via boiling or using tablet, um, water sterilization tablets. So here I have my cooking system. If I was in a larger group, we'd probably be using a Trangia and we would distribute food and cooking parts between two to three to how many of us there is for lighter weight. But if I'm going solo, this is my cooking kit. So right here is when I'd also be putting the majority of my food in. I might be keeping a little bit easier to access for snacks or for lunch throughout the day, but that's where I'm putting my food and my extra bottle of water making sure that obviously seals good, it's done up tight, it's not going to leak all over everything. I would normally also have a 70 litre pack liner, um, dry sack, stuffed in here where everything's going, um, but that was being used uh, so by someone else, so I couldn't use that one today. Um, that was out on loan. <laughs> So at this point, that's majority of my major things packed in. Um, that's my sleeping, that's my cooking and my food. So now we're gonna start to look at the other little bits. So I have what I'm wearing on me, and then any extra clothing, I'm just kinda gonna stuff around the outsides. Um, depending what environment I'm going into, what climate, um, what terrain. I might pack all my clothing into a dry bag or into a compression sack to keep it condensed and to try and keep it as away from the weather as I can because obviously I want my spare clothes to stay dry. But for today's purpose, I'm just stuffing them in and around where there's any gaps in the pack. So that's just extra pants, an extra shirt, um, some extra dry socks and just a lightweight puffer jacket. Um, obviously if I was going, yeah, uh, somewhere warmer or somewhere cooler, that would change what clothing I pack and how many layers of clothing I pack. If I was going somewhere colder, I'd definitely have 
probably a set of thermals on me and a set of thermals in the pack. So that's the major bit of the pack done. Now here I have a waterproof Ziploc map bag, which is fantastic. In it I've also got my compass. So depending where I was, I would sometimes have my compass either on me or in my hip pocket. Um, but if I'm following a trail and I'm not needing my compass, you know, every five minutes, I'll just stuff it down the front of this pack because it's got this really nice stretchable bit on the front. Um, I don't like to use it too much because I'm kind of worried that it'll stretch out if I really put a bunch of stuff in there. So I try to keep it minimal. So that's the majority of the pack packed. Now, floating top, all I'm gonna throw in here is first aid, making sure that I have a really comprehensive first aid kit, double checking everything before I go out and resupplying on anything that is needed. That goes in the top so it's super easy to access. Next, rain jacket. Again, I put that in the top so it's very easy to access. If weather, if and when weather comes in, super easy. Again, at camp or when you're resting, that can also act as an extra layer that will give you warmth, being windproof and waterproof. Um, oh, I've also just got um, like a bucket type hat that I often wear when I'm hiking. So I'll probably just throw that in the top there. Don't need it at the moment. But again, easy to access when I'm walking in the sun. So that's the top all done. Tighten it down just a little bit. And then side pockets. On my hips there, I've got my Oppenel knife, a whistle and head torch that are gonna go in one. And then the other one, any other little bits I have, my lighter, my rolling tobacco papers, um, little bits and pieces that I might have, just get thrown in that hip pocket just so I don't lose them and I'm not carrying them on my pants that are gonna get pretty sweaty if I'm hiking in conditions like today. So that's, that's a pack pack, really. Obviously, as I said, slight alterations depending where I was going. Final thing I do, just pop my two full two full two litre of water in each side. Um, I don't like to keep things on the outside. I always keep the foam mat on the outside because they're cheap to replace um, and it's just easier to have it that way. The only other thing that I would keep on the outside is a wag bag, so waste and garbage bag, um, which is for uh, personal waste and garbage and things like that. Um, here, you know, the basic standard is that you carry everything out, including human waste. So I would prefer to have that attached to the outside of my pack as opposed to the inside, just to keep things a little bit separate and a little bit more sterile and um, 